So nested iteration statements, and these are iteration statements that appear in the body of another iteration statement. We're gonna write three of them, actually four of them, because we're gonna do something. So let's write a method, public static void, we'll just call it A, and we're gonna get a argument, uh, actually a parameter, uh, this, is, this is the method we're writing, and we're going to have a number, and this number is going to be the number of lines with a asterisk or a pound or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're out. So we're going to print out a certain number of lines with an asterisk, but each line is going to increase with one asterisk. So it could look like, it should look like this uh, as an example. So if I can get this right. Uh, so we could look like this. And then, yeah. And then we also want it to decrease. So. There we go. So something like this that I want it to look like. So it's going to go up, and then it's going to go, it's going to go down. So yeah, let's do that. So let's do a for loop. Uh, we're going to do integer i equals zero. And a reminder, with for loops, you can also make while loops to these. So if you want extra practice, uh, make the while loops for these. So while integer i is equal to zero, and while it's less than num, so not while it's equal to zero, but while it's less than num, we're going to increment it by one each time. But we're going to do another for loop. Why would we do another for loop? Well, for one, this one, this first for loop is going to be the line. So it's going to print out the line. This for loop is going to print out the, the pound or the asterisk, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do integer j because we need a different integer. Holy crap, what is wrong with my keyboard? Uh, let me move this over. Or integer j is going to equal to zero. We want j to be less than i. All right. So why j is less than i? It's going to increment by one. And then each time this, this for loop runs, it's going to print out an asterisk. And then when this for loop's over, it's going to print out a new line. So that's what's going to happen. So when we run our code, it's going to print out, let's well, not print out anything because we haven't even called our method yet. So let's call our method real quick. Let's do a, and let's say we want to have four lines. We're going to put four as our argument. So now it's going to go to our code and print out one, four lines, because that's what our first for loop does. And then our next for loop is going to print out uh, four asterisks as we go up. So it's going to start with one, then go to two, then go to three, then go to four. And the reason that it's doing that, it's adding one asterisk every time, is because we're doing j as less than i. So if we're on i equals three, it's going to go with zero, one, two, and then it's going to print out three asterisks. Because remember, it's at zero. If we wanted to change this to one, we'd have to change this to j is less than or equal to i for it to produce the same output. So it's going to produce the same output because I did in fact change it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's going to do that. Now, I also want it to go down, but I also don't want it to duplicate and have two lines of four asterisks. No problem. We can do it. So let's do four integer i is equal to num minus one. Why are we doing num minus one? Well, I want to do i is less than or equal to zero. Actually, no, i is equal to zero. And there's also a reason we're doing less than one is because we don't have a duplicating line of four asterisks. And then we're going to go down, so we're going to do um, i minus minus. Very, very cool. Okay, now what we're going to do is another for loop. Like last time, we're going to do integer j is equal to i. Now, uh, this time, the reason we're doing this is because we are going down. And while j is less than 0, we're going to decrement by 1 as well. And then we're going to print out an asterisk. Yay! Exciting. And then when that for loop ends, we add a new line every time. So now, when we run a, we're going to get actually 8 lines. But the maximum number of asterisks is going to be 4. Very, very cool. And I highly encourage you to play around with this, kind of debug your code, actually unbug your code and add bugs to it uh, to kind of see what happens. What happens when you do uh, j is less than or equal to zero or you set it to something else besides i because that's the whole fun part of Java. <laughs> so yeah, that is one thing we can do. Let's write another method though. Um, where's my method start? There it is. Let's do another void method. We're not going to return a value and we're going to call it nums and we're going to have a uh, perimeter called integer num. 
And basically, what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to be given a number. So let's say it's three. Our first line that's going to print out is going to have one. Our next line is going to have one, two. And then our final line is going to be one, two, three. So how are we going to do that? Well, with nested iterations. So let's do a for loop. Integer i is equal to zero. I love doing i. And then we're going to do i is less than num because we're starting at zero. And then we're going to do i plus plus. And then we're going to do another for loop. Integer j is equal to uh, i. Yes. And then we're going to do j. Actually, no. Let's do j is equal to one. The reason for that is because we're not going to start at number zero. We're not going to print out zero. We're just going to start and print out one. Because this first loop is going to be the line we're on, and the second loop is actually going to be printing out our numbers. So integer j is going to be equal to one. We're going to do j is less than or equal to i. And I'll show you why we're doing this in just a second. And we're going to do j plus plus every time. And then now we're going to print out j is going to be plus um, that right there. <laughs> it's going to be printing out a number plus a space. That's why we're printing out uh, a variable in the space there. So yeah, and then I don't need that. I'm going to print out a new line after this for loop ends. So when we call nums and put in, uh, we'll do four. So we're going to print out four lines. It's going to go to our first for loop and it's going to print out four lines. It's going to have them ready. Uh, what's it called? Nums, not num. Nums. So this first four, four loop is going to print out four lines. The next four loop is going to print out all the numbers. So it's going to start at one and then gradually grow. Now, why is it not printing out four numbers? <laughs> you may ask. It's only printing three. Well, the reason for that is we got to fix this. Let's do i is less than or equal to num. Now, is it going to print out four? Let's see. Yes, it is. So we had to make it less than or equal to um, I kind of wanted to see if you would catch that uh, while I was doing it. So yeah, we want it to equal the certain number of lines. Uh, so yeah, that's what we do. So now we did all this. And if you want to do it backwards, just kind of do the same thing we did our code with the asterisks. I'm not going to do that because I've already kind of gone over it, but you can do it. So let's do one more nested iteration. Let's do another void method. We're going to call it schedule. It's not really be a schedule, but kind of close, and we're going to have integer weeks and integer days. So basically what we're going to do is it's going to print out a week, and it's going to print out days. So it's going to print out uh, week one, day one, day two, day three, day four. So it's going to print out the number of days per week uh, that you have, maybe like you're working or you go to school or something like that. So let's start. Let's do, uh, let's start with the weeks. That's going to be our first one because weeks are bigger than days. More days make up a week. Sorry, days make up the weeks. So let's do... Four integer i is equal to one because we can we can't have zero weeks. Then we're gonna do i is less than or equal to the weeks variable, and then we're gonna do i plus plus every time, and then we're going to print out a new line that says the week, and then the week number uh, we are on. So it's going to print out uh, not weeks i. So that's gonna print out the week number we're on. Then we're gonna put another for loop to print out the days. We're gonna do integer j is equal to one because we can't have a day zero. We're going to do j is less than or equal to days, the variable, and then we're going to increment by one each time. And then we're going to print out on a new line a space to kind of indent it. Then we're going to put a new string. It's going to say day plus j, because j is going to be our day of the week that there is. And then when that for loop finishes, we're going to have a brand new line. It's just going to be a bunch of lines to kind of organize it. So when we run our code, I will explain it in just a second if you're confused. We're going to have two arguments. The first is the week. So let's say we have four weeks. And let's say we have five days. And then it's going to print out four weeks and five days of those weeks. So here we go. Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. So it's going to have five days per week and then four weeks. So four weeks is our first argument. Five days is our next argument. So let's go through the code one more time. So our first one, our first for loop is going to be the weeks, so we're going to have five weeks, so it's going to be, we can't have a zeroth week, so i is going to equal to one, and we want it to equal five at some point, so we're going to do less than or equal to weeks, and we're going to increment by one to go up the weeks. And then before we set our next loop, we're going to print the week, so we're going to do week plus i, because that's the week we're on. Then we're going to do our next for loop, our uh, more nested iteration, I know, uh, and then we're going to do j equals one. And because we can have a zero of day, and j is going to be equal to the number of days. It's the maximum number of days we can have. Um, so yeah, we want it to be equal to them. We don't want to be less than the number of days we input it. So that's why it's be 
less than or equal to. And we want to increment it by one to go up the days of the week. And then we're going to just print out with a space to kind of indent it the day we're on with J, because J is the number of days. So yeah, that's what's happening. And that is 4.4 for AP Computer Science A nested iteration. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It's free and it really does help me out. I have more AP Computer Science videos. If you want to go check those out, uh, they're really, really helpful and all of that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.